Guys, welcome back. I hope everyone is having a great day as always. I'm so excited to give you this upload. It seems like a lifetime since we talked about my F1 firearms build and how it's been holding up 4,000 plus rounds later. And we'll be talking about the LK Inspector 1 to 4 along with the newest iteration of the LK Inspector. I do like it. I do. But that price, oh my God, that price. That's something we'll talk about. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Jeff, and this is where I share my random passions with you guys. I have a passion for firearms. I have a passion for horology. I have a small Rolex collection if you'd like to check it out. And I have a passion for cars. I previously owned two CA Corvettes, and we recently picked up a 2024 Mustang Dark Horse all on the channel if you guys would like to check it out. But today, we're going to be talking about this build and what would I change, how it's holding up, and my first impressions of this LK Inspector. Uh, before we begin, I do got to give a special shout out to Delmar Clay and Shooting Range. That's where all the shooting footage is taking place. It's where I always shoot all my firearms. And of course, my buddies over at JK Associates. That is where I purchase all my firearms. Having said that, in full disclosure, um, I have no relationship with any of the companies or brands on this channel, and I purchase all my firearms. So, guys, give me a thumbs up, like, share, share. Ah, blah, blah. blah. So if you guys like this content, like, share, give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. It really does help this channel grow. And let's get on with this review. Kicking things off, this is my dedicated research and engineering build. Anytime I want to test out a new trigger, barrel, BCG, or in this case an optic, the LK Inspector 1-4, to uh, I do it on this test bed. Uh, I do this for a specific reason. My UGRI 14.5 is my primary, and this is set at 77 grain. So once I have my primary set up and it's dialed in, I don't change it unless I absolutely have to. Having said that, I do have other platforms, um, and when I want to change those up, I test everything on this first. So I have a Geisley uh, SSAE two stage we're trying out right now. And I want to test out some different grips. And right now we're doing the BCM. Uh, this goes a long way, especially if you're cha changing out barrels and stuff like that of what you can do. Now this build, if you'd like to see a full review on this, I'll put it right up here as a link. Uh, this was, I think about four or five years ago we did this build. So prices had changed dramatically. So far, 4,000 rounds later, shooting 50 to 300 yards. This gun has been absolutely phenomenal. Not one jam at all. Now, what would I change? Two things. One, an adjustable gas block. That's one thing I would definitely change. Uh, and, and that is only because this was not set up to be suppressed, and I would like it to be. So, a four or a three prong surefire in the front would be awesome for the Recce RC2, just like I have on the UGRI. I like to have the same setup. This has been an awesome can. So I would like to have an adjustable gas block just in case. Now, having said that, there's ways you can work around that, you know, different buffer weight, different springs and all that good stuff. But I would change that. That is one thing I would definitely change. Having said all that, this BCG has been absolutely amazing. The DLC black from uh, F1 Firearms, I think it was about $280 about five years ago. One of the slickest BCGs I've ever shot. Dare I say, you don't have to keep this wet, meaning lubricated. I keep all my guns lubricated regardless, but I shoot this gun dry all the time. It just does not jam. When I first built this gun, I was very skeptical of it being skeletonized. You know, a lot of people were like, well, it's kind of gimmicky. That's not a go-to-war gun. Well, currently, we're not in war. Well, at least I'm not. Um, so for civilian use... If I had to grab this gun and go, absolutely. I'm saying that from my experience, right? From shooting 4,000 plus rounds later, this gun has been phenomenal. LK Inspector, one to four, self-explanatory if you know anything about them. Uh, these have been primarily in military use for over two decades. Probably three decades, I'm pretty sure. Uh, next to the Trigicon ACOG, which is just a fixed four power, a four by 32, these two are direct competitors. So you have a choice if you want to shoot CQB or close quarters, have your RMR on the top and your fixed four power in the bottom. The difference is going to be immediately, if you shot them back to back, side by side, the glass clarity between these two 
it's going to be different. In my opinion, the glass clarity in the Trijicon is clean. It's a lot, I'm going to say a lot, it is crisper. It's, it's more of a crisp, clean uh, look on the reticle. But your eye relief on this setup right here is absolutely phenomenal. So your field of view and your eye relief on this Elkan Spectre is just, there is not another one to four optic as far as I know for eye relief and the, and the field of view that beats this setup. Now one thing that you are going to notice is with the ACOG setup, uh, primarily the RMR top mount for your ACOG, um, your cheek well is going to change if you're going to go to your red dot. Now obviously you can branch it over to your left or to your right, whatever eye dominant you are, and try to keep your cheek well in that position. Um, but that's one thing you have to think about. When you're changing uh, from one power to four power in the uh, LK Inspector, you're definitely going to break your cheat well. That's just the way it is. Is that a big deal? Not really. It's not really a huge deal. Having said that, price point. Now, these particular optics right now, um, I mean, it, it really depends on where you're looking at, right? Optics Planet has a lot of sales throughout the years. I think I picked this up. I think it's right around $1,600 or $1,700 with a bunch of discounts. I've seen these price points all over the place. You guys let me know what you think as the price points are right now because I really don't know what they are right now. Having said that, they do have another iteration of this optic. So the latest iteration has Picatinny on the top, has a built-in flash hider. I believe you can obviously take it off. Um, it has better accessibility for your batteries. I don't think the clarity on the, on the glass has changed. But let me tell you, I'll put a picture right here. The newest iteration of this Elkan Spectre, wow, that price, over $3,000. That's just too much. I mean, honestly, that's just not me. You do get what you pay for, um, $1,600, $1,700 all day long for this. Built like a tank. I mean, I don't think there's another optic besides the ACOG that's built stronger than this for a four power. Now, the one thing I don't like about this, I don't know if you can see it or not, is right there. That has to be clicked up or down for you to make your adjustments. So your reticle is not changing, but the housing is when you're going up and down. Now these uh, is, is a quick detach system that comes with this, and that's kind of old. Um, but you can do, you can incorporate wire ties right there to keep these locked down. So there's been a lot of debate with the LK Inspector. You know, what if you get sand inside here and this jams and stuff like that? Anybody I've ever worked with uh, that's been out in the field, I've never heard of any problems as far as that happening. Can it happen? Sure. I mean, anything can happen, to be honest with you. But um, next to uh, the glass clarity of the Trijicon, uh, this is one of the best four power optics, field of view, and eye relief that I've ever seen on this particular setup. Obviously, you could tell I'm a fan. Is it old school? Absolutely. Nowadays, you have plenty of other options if you want to do an LVPO, a low variable power, uh, um, power optic, that's up to you. But for me, uh, this is what I choose. Now, as far as weight, it's going to weigh, I want to say a little heavier than the Trijicon with the RMR, but you get a complete package with this, right? So you are getting uh, close quarters, uh, a one power and a four power all in one package. So if you add the weight of ACOG with the top mount RMR, &R, &R, I want to say they're about the same. This might be a little heavier. If your firearm is set up correctly uh, and your weight's more transitioned towards the back, you're really not going to feel it too much anyway. Now, this is not a full load rifle, as you can tell, right? There's no, you don't see any kind of light. You know, there's no nods. There's none of that stuff on here, right? So obviously your weight will add up. Is that a big deal? Not really. You just got to train accordingly, you know. So in this setup, like I said before, um, I have my light set up everything for what this is used for, right? Suppress and hold on yards. This is not going to be dedicated for nods as of right now. So weight is not really that big of a deal as long as you train properly for the firearm. Let me rephrase that. If you're humping a gun 8, 10 miles, weight can be an issue. But in my opinion, uh, previous generation of this 
LK Inspector first impressions all day long if you get it at a good price on sale or use, I wouldn't hesitate. Now, if you're shooting like you should with both eyes open, um, the scoping is not going to be an issue whatsoever. So if that is a problem for you as far as scoping, uh, meaning the shadow uh, as you're looking through your optic, you know, maybe that's something you need to think about. But shooting out to, uh, you know, 500 yards or even 300 yards is not a problem um, with this rifle. Now, this, as far as the LK Inspector, is dedicated for 300 yards on end. So shooting 300 yards is pretty simple with this. Uh, for my eyes, at, <laughs> at a four power, um, it's, it's not bad at all. This is an etch reticle, and this is obviously for 5.56. Now, the grain of ammo is varying because this is a test bed. So right now, I'm sticking just a 55 grain. If this becomes dedicated on something like my UGRI, it's probably going to be 77 grain, and my point of impact is going to change. So it's something I have to think about. But anyway, uh, in conclusion, this gun is shooting phenomenal. I, I would change the adjustable gas block I would add on here. I would do a four or three prong for the uh, Surefire Recce. Probably a different buffer spring and weight if I had to. And um, the lower, uh, that's always changing. It really depends. But that's what I would change currently. I have no regrets on this build. LK Inspector, as you can say, I, I love it. I, I think it's phenomenal if you can get it for the right price point. Um, if you're choosing between this and an ACOG, it's, it's really gonna be up to you as far as personal use and what's in your budget. So guys, let me know what you think. What would you choose as far as an optic? Would you choose the LK Inspector or would you choose the ACOG or what would you choose? Would it be an LPVO? Uh, it, it, it can vary, right? It all depends on what your budget is and your eyes as well, to be honest with you. So um, that concludes this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I just wanted to give you guys an update on how this firearm was holding up. I, I can't I, I can't say enough. I'm really happy about it, I really am. And um, the LK Inspector so far, uh, I'm pretty happy for uh, its purpose of, of what I'm using it for. So you guys uh, like, share, subscribe, have a great day, and I'll see you at the next upload.